Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today and over the last few days, tensions have been rising between the United States and China. And one of the main reasons uh, tensions are increasing is that uh, good old batshit crazy Nancy Pelosi was uh, looking at taking a possible trip uh, to Taiwan. So, in regard of my uh, feelings and opinion about uh, batshit crazy Nancy Pelosi is, is really irrelevant. Uh, can she go to Taiwan? Yes, absolutely. And uh, this is part of a, of a bigger problem that uh, both the United States, Taiwan, and China are going to face uh, in the years and decades to come. Obviously, uh, China has declared that uh, Taiwan is a red line for, uh, for China. And, uh, to speak frankly, Taiwan is also a red line for the United States. And given the fact that uh, Taiwan produces uh, more than 50% of semiconductors, and these are some of the most advanced semiconductors on the planet, uh, it is not in the interest of the United States to see Taiwan come under the heel of the uh, communist tyrannical government in Beijing. Now, does that mean there is going to be a war between China and the United States? Oh yes, absolutely. It's going to happen. Is it going to happen tomorrow? Probably not. Uh, China is, is very well aware that uh, currently uh, they do not have the military capacity, one, to defeat the United States, and two, they do not have the capacity to defeat Taiwan, the Republic of China. Uh, they could possibly uh, cause a blockade of Taiwan uh, if, if the United States does not intervene, but uh, the concept that the Chinese, the, the, the People's Liberation Army, could launch a amphibious invasion of Taiwan is just something they uh, they don't have the capability yet right now. And I'm, I've I've done videos on this before. I've talked about it. I've talked about the why. I've talked about the challenges. And and China just again does not have the capability to uh, seize control of Taiwan. Yes, I know China has over a billion people, but it's much more complicated than that. And uh, the uh, the Republic of China, Taiwan has a very, very capable uh, defense force, a very uh, capable uh, air force with lots of uh, high-end American equipment that would be used to prevent said invasion. Uh, at the same time, uh, the United States would probably not have to expend too much effort to prevent the Chinese from invading Taiwan. Uh, people talk about these, uh, these uh, anti-ship ballistic missiles, these carrier killers that the Chinese possess. Look, the United States will withdraw those carriers thousands and thousands of miles away. They will keep them mobile and, uh, and in the early stages of any conflict the United States would uh, start to degrade and destroy the, uh, the Chinese ability to sense certain targets that it may uh, uh, use to, uh, to, to launch and target those uh, ballistic anti-ship missile systems, but the reality is the, uh, the, the big component of this war, uh, if it were to happen between, especially now, currently, between now and the next five years, that would negate Chinese ability to invade Taiwan is not uh, the U.S. carrier battle groups. It is one, and I've talked about this before, the, uh, the American subsurface threat the improved Los Angeles attack boat and the Virginia class attack boat as well. Uh, these systems would uh, play unholy hell upon a wide variety of Chinese targets uh, to include both land targets and uh, sea based targets as well. And uh, it would just make it near impossible for China to continue in an offensive campaign 
against uh, against Taiwan. Yes, Taiwan, uh, China could continue to rain down uh, ballistic missiles uh, on Taiwan, but uh, ultimately China would have to put boots on the ground and uh, try and seize control of the island, and it just does not have that capability. Now, as we look at this from a, uh, a geopolitical standpoint, and we understand that eventually China is going to be at a point where it feels that it may have the ability to uh, to launch an attack against Taiwan. Uh, I would say in terms of American strategy, it's, uh, it's uh, better now than later. Uh, I think it would be a opportune time now and within the next five years to smack China's PP as opposed to doing that uh, in 2030 or beyond into 2040. Uh, we can definitely do that now with uh, uh, outside of the use of, uh, of, of a nuclear exchange. Uh, China would have a very, very tough time uh, dealing with some capabilities that the United States would employ again, especially the, uh, the, uh, the U.S. Uh, nuclear attack boats, uh, not actually launching nuclear weapons, but the ability to launch uh, sea-launched cruise missiles and, uh, and other systems against uh, Chinese uh, surface assets and land targets as well. And then the uh, U.S. Uh, B-2 bomber and uh, long-range cruise missiles, uh, again, launched from long-range aircraft, uh, would, would play havoc upon the, uh, the Chinese. And again, they just they would not have the ability uh, to launch that invasion against uh, Taiwan. And uh, I feel uh, currently now would be more of an opportune time to deal with China than in 2030. In 2030, things may change. Uh, I, I don't know what the political situation in the United States is going to look like. That could be a uh, uh, have a heavy impact on a future war between the United States and China, and then obviously uh, the continued uh, Chinese military buildup. Uh, they continue to deploy uh, ships and other military equipment, produce and deploy these systems at a very very fast pace, which eventually is going to far outpace the United States outside of some new uh, technological advances that we could see inside of the, the United States as, as well. But uh, too early for China to, to make a move against Taiwan. Obviously, it is a red line for China and it is a red line for the United States. The Chinese can, can talk about Taiwan being a red line for China all at once, but Taiwan is a red line for the United States too. We are not going to let that regime in China take control of 50% of the chips of the uh, uh, semiconductor sector. Not going to happen. And uh, we would have to do something about that. Hence, red line for the United States as well. So, uh, I mean, you see the kind of support Ukraine is getting right now. Multiply that by 10 and then add direct uh, uh, a military attack against China by the United States. That's how serious the United States is about not allowing a communist uh, uh, People's Republic of China takeover of Taiwan. I don't believe they have the capability to do it on their own one-on-one -on -one Taiwan against China as it is with a little bit of, of, of uh, assistance from the United States, uh, a sensory type of, uh, of help. Uh, but uh, and then if you actually throw in direct uh, the uh, direct action by the United States, not going to happen. Not now. Not in five years. Twenty thirty, we'd have to reassess and, and kind of take a hard look. China would have to really improve its subservice capability, and um, th they're just not there. They're a long way off from being able to engage the United States, especially. Uh, some of our stealth assets, and then more importantly, those subsurface threats that the United States deploy. So just wanted to talk about that today. Obviously, it's starting to become a renewed issue and uh, wanted to produce some content on it, and there it is. Uh, thanks for joining us. Feel free to comment in the comment section. I'm, I'm sure I'll hear something. So uh, that's it. Have a good day.